Good morning, welcome back to our video series on how to convert your own truck into an RV hauler. This morning we're warming up the truck. We're going to take it over to Nord Trucks Volvo here in Calgary and they're going to be doing some computer programming for us. We've got a couple primary things that we want to do. We've got the traction control light on and the ABS light on because of course we've removed an axle from the truck and it's sensing that things have changed. So they're going to do the programming to make that change as well. There's quite a few parameters that we can set inside this truck. And we're going to go through that complete list, learn about some of the customizations that can be done. Well, the truck has had a chance to warm up this morning. Let's turn off our interior lights and hit the road. So the tech tool is reading, it's downloading all the data, is it? Uh, it's just starting up the communication link between the computer itself and all the communication modules within the Okay. So we're choosing parameter programming? Yep. This will give you all of the uh, parameters that you can change. What they're at, what they can be set to. bunch of parameters that you can change. Uh, customer road speed limit. So this is one of our speed limit values. Maximum goes 87 miles per hour, which is approximately 140 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Right now you're set to 80. It can't go any higher? Oh, it can. It can go about 6.3 miles per hour higher. Well, can you open it right up? Sure can. So the overall goal here is we don't want any limits on the truck. Okay. Let's see if I can move there we go. Max engine speed stationary. So it's set to 2,000 RPM? Yeah. Is that a little high? Uh, I mean, no. Why would you need to go that high? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, maybe just customer, what the customer feels they, they like. So uh, in this case, Jack was looking for maybe 1,500 RPM? 15, we can drop yeah. that down for sure. So as Mitchell was going through all of these settings, he found that there's a couple settings that were errored, errors, and it warned us, so he's correct in those. So basically when you come into something like this, back of cab fault detection, um, it is a lighting system, and there you get a little, once you click on the line or the uh, parameter, you get a little description right up here. So uh, active, inactive, fault detection, setting for back of cab. Use zero milliamps to inactivate the open circuit fault detection. Use 500 milliamps to activate the open circuit fault detection. 100 milliamps is not usable for this parameter. So basically what they're talking about is the lights that are on the side of the cab, uh, towards the front, behind your doors. So, mm -hmm. should be great. Those guys, your back of cab lights. Um, now, what they're asking here is, would you like a warning light to come up anytime there's an issue with one of those lights? I would say, yeah. Now, these ones are LEDs, so are those gonna, uh, is that gonna create an issue for us?
So that might be the reason that that was disabled is because they've been changed LED. Uh, generally when you get a red warning like that, it's because the uh, modules have been updated, they've been programmed, and they've uh, got updated programming in them, and just nobody set a parameter in them yet. So okay. just blank. It's like they weren't there. So in this case, um, right now we're just gonna leave it at enable and then just see what happens. If it throws a light just because it has LEDs in it, then we can go back and turn it off. Yeah. Um, exterior lights. This is the one that we were in, the back to have fault detection here. Uh, activate front light. So if you don't have fog lights, you wouldn't have this thing. But we're obviously we do. fog lights. Um, and everything else is just All right. to deal with your lights. Program. So we definitely want eco roll. Yeah, that's already right. turned on. Um, how about lowest eco roll gear? So that's interesting at seven. Seven is probably about right because I mean, we start in four. Customer data is GC password. We don't want to play with that because if somebody ever has to go back into there and program the ECM for whatever may happen yeah. in the future. We don't want to hold them up by putting a password in there. And so there was no password? No. So there was a whole bunch of miscellaneous vehicle. Yeah. All right. So these are just uh, parameters that you can set according to what the vehicle is equipped with. So if your vehicle comes with air conditioning, which it does, does it have an Allison transmission in which you have well, this? Yeah. this doesn't so back of cab light that's already there there's a lot of of just minute factors that come into play highest starting gear is six lowest is one yeah which is great yep and you can change things like this from gear number of reverse gears Set it up to four. Or you can drop you it set down. it up to four. Go for it. So that'll just be changed by when you're in reverse. Yeah, this is an I shift, so it's either two little buttons. Yep. Okay, what's the? I'm curious about that trailer detection mode. Can we look at that one? Uh, selection of basic or advanced trailer detection. Basic trailer detection method is sensing the trailer by sensing the current consumption of the incandescent bulbs fitted on the trailer. Advanced trailer detection mm -hmm. is sensing a trailer by using the pressure sensor on a quick park brake air system. Advanced trailer detection 24 volt sensitive trailer by using the current sensor and sensing the current consumption of the LED modules and or this bulb. Um, so I think we leave that as is. Yeah. Well, and so. kick down mode down below, kick down always available, that's great. So that's the end of that list. So road speed limit is definitely one that these guys are always interested in. Cruise control max speed. So we're going to open this one right up. Yeah. Set it to 87 miles per hour. And then what you can set your min cruise control to. So he wanted, i got to find my notes here, 20 miles per hour. 20. That's our road speed limit that we already changed and opened right up. Okay, system warnings. Okay, brake lights. Fog lights, low current, low side LED. So go ahead and hit program. So there's the ones we're changing. So it's written all the changes to the ECU? Yep. So what we're going to do is save all of these parameters to the job card. So you can export those for us, print them out or... Yep. Awesome. So these are the trouble codes that are on the truck right now. 
Okay, so pressure modulation valve, um, axle three. So that would be a third axle, depending yeah. on which ones are changed, we'll have to change those accordingly. Uh, we know about all those, wheel speed sensors, um, axle two, yeah, axle three. That was interesting, we shouldn't have that one. Coolant level, that's probably your check engine. Yeah, line. that's. Uh, information display, yeah, we already know about that one. Transmission, air pressure tank, okay. no. data link. Okay. So. Well, there, I saw that there's a line on the work order to just replace the coolant temp or coolant level sensor. Yeah. Yeah, it was falsing. It was going to put us into an idle shutdown or a limp mode. So it's just connected, disconnected right now. We want to replace that. Okay. Sensor. Okay, so that will be replaced, and that should take care of this code altogether. Um, as for the other codes here. Those we'll have to take care of in the Bendix module itself. Uh, if it does have Bendix or Labco, whichever one it does have. Uh, okay. All right. So that's, so that's ultimately how we want to, what we want to correct with the axle removal. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to print this off so we have an idea of what the codes are. Close this down.